we challenge ourselves to consider the possibility that we might be wrong on the things that we feel the deepest conviction about. It's not necessarily about your views changing, it's about gaining a deeper understanding. And I feel like that is the best way forward. I'm Zach Wood, president of Uncomfortable Learning at Williams College, and my administration disinvited speakers that made them uncomfortable. Uncomfortable Learning is a student group on campus that strives to broaden the range of dialogue on campus of political issues um, and issues of critical importance in our time. We try to bring speakers to campus who express views that are controversial, views that are unpopular, and views that we need to think critically about. Affirmative action, climate change, sexual assault on campuses, issues regarding race, class, and gender. A number of the speakers we've brought up been controversial. Uh, we've had Casey Johnson come to campus. We've had Charles Murray come to campus most recently. Two speakers that we've tried to bring have been canceled. The first was Suzanne Banker in October, and the second was John Derbyshire, and that was last month. The impetus for canceling the speakers was that there were students on campus who felt as though the opinions these speakers wanted to put forward were not just unsettling but they thought that they were dehumanizing and they felt as though bringing them to campus was a denigration of their intellect and something that was deeply disrespectful. As soon as I made the Facebook page for the event, there were students who were saying, Zach Wood is causing literal harm, literal violence on campus, social violence, psychological violence, and physical violence. It was, it was on Yik Yak, it was on Facebook, it was all over social media. Williams is a small campus. Our student body consists of only 2,300 students. When you see your name on Yik Yak, when your name is on Facebook, when you're receiving personal messages, when there are notes slipped under your door, it, it is a bit, a bit jarring, in a sense, to think that simply because you support free speech, people are attacking your character. People who've never spoken to you are judging you unfairly and view you as a bad person, it's a difficult thing to deal with. But ultimately, when I, when I think about the figures that I admire the most, I remember that they've stood up for things when it was difficult to stand up for what they believed in. That's Martin Luther King. That is our founding fathers. And for me, that gives me strength. If we challenge ourselves to consider the possibility that we might be wrong on the things that we feel the deepest conviction about. It's not necessarily about your views changing, it's about gaining a deeper understanding. And I feel like that is the best way forward. I think Peter Wood wrote a very good article in the Chronicle of Higher Education in which he stated that Adam Falk could have said this is an opportunity for us to push our intellectual limits. This is an opportunity for us to step outside of our comfort zone. And this is an opportunity for us to deal with ideas that, that many Americans hold and beliefs that many Americans hold, ideas that we're going to have to confront in the real world. I think it's very important for us to hear from people whose views unsettle us. It's important for us to hear from people whose views we find offensive. And President Obama said this not long ago. There's been a video circulating where he said, I don't think the, the way to learn is to say, you know, because I'm, I don't want to hear this, because this makes me uncomfortable, we shouldn't have you here. I don't agree that you, when you become students at colleges, have to be coddled and protected from different points of view. It has been great to receive fire, fire support. I really appreciated the opportunity that FIRE offered for me to, to write an opinion piece on an issue that I care so deeply about. And it's nice to know that outside of Williams, I have some form of institutional support because it's difficult to be a student on a small campus and know that the administration doesn't support what you're doing. The disinvitation essentially said that while the administration supports the idea of social tolerance, the idea of students being accepting of one another, they don't support and promote and try to instill political tolerance. So I, th I think that educators can do more in terms of presenting more perspectives in class. I think that the administration can do more in terms of creating opportunities for us to have those discussions.